Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbilalamin. Arrahmanirrahim. Maliki yaumiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. Ihdinash siratal mustaqim. Siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim ghairil mahdubi 'alaihim waladh dhalin. Rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana dhunubana wa qina 'adzaban nar. As-sabirin wa as-sadiqin wal ghanitin wal munfiqin wal mustaghfirun bil isghar. Shahid Allah annahu la ilaha wa malaikatu wa ulul ilmi ghaiman bil ghist La ilaha illa huwa al azizu al hakim Rabbana atina fi dunia hasnatan wa fi lahirati hasnatan wa aqina azab al nar Subhani rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifuna wa salamun ala al musalina wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Amin Shukran Imam Yala And Bishop you have the floor please Thank you Chairman Lord God Almighty Praise, honor, and glory be unto your name forever and ever. As we continue the sittings of the TRRC, we continue to bring the whole populace before you, those that are here and those that are abroad, that are following the sittings, that are following the witnesses, what they have to say. And we continue to pray that your Holy Spirit will move within the hearts and minds of the people of this nation. So that, Lord, patience will be there a lot as the sitting goes on, as we continue to hear revolutions things that may be hurtful, things that may be unpleasant. But give us the courage to allow the due process of the law to take its course. And for we know that you will deal justly with each and every one. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, my Bishop. Council, are we ready with this morning's witness? If so, please proceed. Um, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning to you all. The witness is in the waiting room. Can I ask that he be brought in? I use of Asane. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Good morning, Mr. Sane. Welcome to the TRRC. Uh, good morning, Ma. How are you doing this morning? Uh, I'm fine, Ma. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Um, we have quite a lot to cover today. Yes, ma'am. But I will first start by introducing myself properly because yeah. we met very briefly this morning. Yes, My name is Horeja Balagay. I will be asking you questions today on behalf of the commissioners. Yes, ma'am. At the end of my questions, the commissioners may also ask you additional questions and then you will be allowed to make a final statement. Yes, ma'am. You have just taken an oath to tell the truth, the yes, whole truth. Yes, ma. You understand what that means? Yes, ma. And you do understand that it is an offense to lie or mislead the commission? Yes, ma. Um, you have been informed of these rules, but I just repeat them for um, the sake of the record. Additionally, um, there is interpretation going on into the local languages. Yes, ma. 
tr during your testimony, we will start in English, but you have also requested to um, speak in Mandinka at certain points. Yes, ma'am. And um, also in Jola at certain points. Yes, ma'am. So we will alert the interpreters um, when that time comes, because they need to switch the interpreters um, in dif from different booths in order for them to interpret it. Yes, ma'am. But as you and I are speaking right now in English, there is still interpretation into Wolof and Mandinka and Fuller um, in here, the hearing room. So we must speak slowly. Yes, and please allow a break between um, when I end my speech and when you begin to respond to my questions, just so that there won't be any overlapping speech. Yes, ma'am. So that will make it a bit slower, but we do have the time and um, we have a lot to cover. If at any point my questions are unclear or you would like me to repeat um, my question, please feel free to do so. Yes, ma'am. The topics that we will cover today are just the background of who you are, so your personal details, your um, educational background as well as your work um, experience. Yeah. We will talk about your role as um, a physical guard at Kanilai. Yes, ma'am. We will also talk about any incidents that you may have witnessed at that time, yes, which are of interest to the commission. Yes, ma'am. Then we will talk about your role as the fo one of the former orderlies of um, former President Yaya Jame. Yes, ma'am. We will also talk about other incidents that you have knowledge about or you may have witnessed during that time. And we will cover a lot of information about um, generally what kind of person Yaya Jame was, the type of experience you had working with him. We will also talk about um, another topic, which is the focus of the theme of um, the commission right now, which is on sexual and gender-based violence. Yes, ma'am. And then lastly, we will talk about um, your arrest and detention, um, as well as members of your family. Yes, ma'am. And so those are the five big topics, but of course there's a lot to cover within um, most of the topics. Yes, Do you understand? Yes, ma. Are you ready to proceed with that? Yes, ma. Okay. Um, for the record, can you please state your full name? Uh, my name is Yusufa Sane. Mr. Sane, can you tell us when and where you were born? I was born on the September 9, September 11, 1976, in Sifo Village. And can you give us a, bi a brief history about your educational background? So telling us which institutions you attended and the years when you attended those institutions. I attended C4 Primary School uh, in 1984 to 1986. From there, from 84 to 19, sorry, from 84 to 1989, then after I proceeded to Gunju Secondary School from 1989 academic year to 1990 to 1990 to 1994. Then I graduated from the Gunju Secondary Technical, Technic, Technical School. And after you um, finished um, at Gunju Technical School, did you s begin your career or did you do something else in between? Uh, during that time, you know, I was an athletist. Um, that is from 1994 or 5. So then after I joined the army in 1995. Do you recall the month when you joined the army? Mm, it's going to be like uh, maybe September and 18 intake. 18 intake. Thank yeah. you for that. So when you joined the Gambia National Army um, in September 95, as the 18 intake, can you tell us a bit about what kind of training you had? Um, it's like infantry training. That was in Fajara Barracks. That's four months. Um, and what kind of um, training did that entail? When you say infantry training, what did it entail? That's like, you know, a basic military, like somebody who joined the army, like an infantry, you know, soldier. So I assume you would learn about drills and Dreams, how to handle yeah. weapons. How to handle That's safety of weapons, you know. And so after four months of your training, um, what was your rank? 
I was a recruit, private soldier, you know. And after the training? Then I was transferred to the gas battalion, that is Fajara Barracks. So you were a private soldier at Fajara Barracks? Fajara Barracks, yes. Can you tell us, um, so that would have been at the beginning of 1996, Yeah, 19, no, in the same 19, the same is the same 1995, because September, October, November, December. Okay. Then graduate on, as a recruit on December, then 90, yes, 1996 okay. in Fajara Barracks, mm -hmm. yes, as a private soldier. And so what was your role um, when you were posted at Fajara Barracks? What did your job entail? Uh, in Fajara Barracks, I was in the Bravo company, like doing guards, like duties in the barracks. And sometimes we go for away guard. We call it like, you know, away guard, you know, like go to power station, you know. And essentially, what would be your role there? Our uh, securities, our uh, securities, uh, different places like Kutu Power Station, um, sometimes um, we go to K-Point, Radio Gambia, you understand? You so know. to guard key installations in key the country? Key installations, yeah. And how much time did you spend at Fajara Barracks as, um, as a guard? Um, like from 96 to up to up to 2000 then 2002 just a question before that during that period between 1996 and 2000 di did you undergo any other type of training no okay and during that time did your rank change it's not change as a private soldier so after spending that period at um, Fajara Barracks until 2000, what happened in 2000? In 2000, I was uh, transferred to as an orderly to the uh, battalion commander over there in Fajara Barracks. And do you recall the name of the battalion commander that you served? Um, I served for the two commanders, like Major... They call him uh, Super Hua, Super Hua, I forgot his name, you know. See it. Super Hua Charm, you know. Or maybe I will remember his name, you know, because mm -hmm. long time. Then after mm -hmm. Major Chorna Jallo is the last one I serve, you know. And so for how long did you serve as an orderly to two the years, command? Two years, from two years. Uh, 2000 to, from year 2000 to 2002. And as an orderly for um, the commander of Fajara Barracks, what were your um, responsibilities? Uh, my responsibilities like taking care of the office, the command office over there in Fajara Barracks, like cleaning the office, parking, make sure that everything is in order over there, like the files, you know, and taking care of like the commander's personal belongings, like shoes to sign them so that it can, they can be glittered, you know. Because as a commander, you know, we'll, the at least like the yeah, commander to be, you know, so much neat and clean, like the shoes signing, you know, so be signed. Anywhere they go, they are supposed to be signing. So that is our main job over there. So taking care of um, the commander's personal um, items essentially yeah, as well yeah. as files at the office office yeah going with the commander to various places as well yeah, sometimes if you know sometimes if you want to go to a place we go sometimes you'll say okay you stay in the office and did your rank change at all while you were serving <coughs> as um, as orderly to the commander of Fajara barracks no And after that, can you tell us if you underwent any kind of training, any kind of military training at all? Yes, I went for uh, commando training. That was when um, the commander, uh, Major Chornajalo, went for a course 
I remember, you know, he traveled, so he went for UN mission. So by that time, there is an adjutant over there, the second in command. But he's not, I'm the one going to, only my job is only going to the office and clean the office and stay there. So the second in command is the adjutant who is there. So during that time, you know, I'm, it's like, you know, there is no, they don't post a commander to that place. So I was free. So um, the adjutant which was there, you know, told me you are selected to go for, uh, to go for a commando training course. Do you recall the name of the adjutant at that time? Uh, it's General Bah. It's now, you know, uh, later Bah. He was in, in, I don't know, Nigeria. Then after he went to U.S. Do you know General Bah's first name? Uh, I forgot his name, but I will think about it here. So General uh, Bar told you. Aliu, is it Aliu Bar? Aliu Bar, something like that. So General Bar told you about um, a commando training. Commando training, yeah. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, when when I I was with um, one soldier, he's also a, a private soldier. His name is Aliu Jeng. We are the one who sell the seller. Aliu Jeng was in Bravo Company at that time. And this Aliu Jeng, do you know where he is currently? Uh, I know he's here in the Gambia here. No. He's detained, I don't know. I was reading the TRC, so his testimony, you know, I don't know what, I don't go deeply in it, but they say, Alan, that, you know, he's detained. So it is the Aliu Jeng who has appeared before the TRRC as a witness? Yeah. Okay. Do you recall what year that commando training was held? Same 2002. 2002. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit more about the training itself, what it entailed. Uh, the training um, is like, they call it's like Scorpion 2. It's like, as the first badge is like, they trained the first badge, then that was called Scorpion 1. Then Scorpion 2 is the is the second training team. And this would help us have more clarity about this. When you say they trained the first batch, Scorpion 1, you were not part of that I'm training, correct? Yeah, I'm not part of that team, yeah. Do you know when that training took place? Um, I don't know, actually, but I think after six months, when they finish their training, then our team go. And still focusing on Scorpion One, do you know um, who gave that training? Uh, this is, I believe, you know, the that circle came from the Army headquarters, the Gambia Army headquarters. You know. So let me phrase it differently. Are you aware um, of whether the trainers were um, Gambians or foreign nationals? The training team is. Foreigners, you have the foreigners there and the Gambians. There are the foreigners like they are Libyans. So training conducted by um, Libyans as well as Gambians. Yes, Libyans and the Gambians, yeah. And that was Scorpion one. Yeah. Do you know of any um, of your colleagues who took part in that training, the Scorpion one? Yeah. Um, like Alu Jeng, the one, you know, I go with. Then you have the other colleagues from from other battalions like Yanku Basanyang, Bubasane, you have Lami Sedikan. You have uh, Sergeant Job, ST Job, you have. Anyway, it's a long time, you know. Maybe if I sit, I can recall all the names, you know. No, that's, that's quite helpful. 
And what were the ranks of these soldiers that you've mentioned at the time? Uh, some of them are sergeants, some are private soldiers. Yeah. So it was a mix of ranks, ranks yeah. that um, pursued this training. Yeah. So let's focus on Scorpio II, which is um, the training that you took part in, yeah. in 2002. Yeah. Um, who were the trainers? The trainers are the Lib Libyans, you know, training team, the Libyans, my, our commander, the colonel is Colonel Ahmad. You, know, you have staff serving in Ramadan. And Faraj, we have one name, so his name is Faraj. And all three of them were Libyans? Libyans and Saad, Saad, it's a sergeant, Sergeant Saad, is a Libyan. Saar. Saad, S-A-D, Saad. Saad. Okay. And apart from the Libyans, were there any Gambian trainers? Yeah. Um, can you tell us who they were? Uh, uh, Solbaji, General Solbaji. You have uh, Staff Sergeant Mustafa Fall. You have uh, Maliki Jata. Because those people attended uh, Scorpion One training. They said when I was there, he was an instructor there. Sana Manjang, also an instructor. Were those the only Gambian trainers, um, instructors that you recall? Yes. Maybe if I think four, I know I can remember some. There were more than More these than ones. that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about some of the um, trainees, such as yourself. Um, who else was part of your group? Who else was trained? In our group, yes, yeah, it's two thousand. You know, maybe if I think, you know, if you give me time, you know, I have break later. I can recall the names, you know. But Paul, roughly how many of you um, were trained during Scorpio II? Yeah. How many roughly? Was it almost 20 like or more? like a platoon is to almost 30 people. So about 30? Yeah, during the training, some drop. Some of, you know, during the training because they say it's a qualification. You know, if you don't reach the standard, you know, they drop you. And how long did this train last? Uh, it lasts almost four to five months. And do you recall where the training was held? Um, it's the Gambia Police Training School in Yundumi. So this training at the police school, the commando training, tell us what, um, what your courses were about. What did you learn? Um, what did you do during that training? Uh, first, first, you know, we train to become commandos like physical fitness, you know, survive enemy line, infiltration, survival, and sip, sip to beach. You know, deep from sip to beach infiltration and operation in the river. Yeah, please continue. Yeah, it's all about that, you know. Okay. And so when you say um, moving from ship to, it was more of a... Um, yeah, training in the exercise. river, yeah. Yeah, operation in the river. Okay. You know. And so, do you know what the, the objective of this training course was about? What was the end, um, the objective of it? Uh, normally, when we, before we start training, you know, 
these people will we normally pray in the name of God that this every day in our drill before we start training, you know, we always pray. Somebody will pray in front like in the name of God. Whatever we do is between us and God and we are there to protect and defend the country and take orders. Let me put it differently. After the training ended, um, about four or five months of training, um, were you posted anywhere in particular? Yeah. Did your role change? Tell us about that. Yeah. After the training, they transfer us to the state house. You told us that you began the training with about a platoon, so about 30 men. Yeah, yeah, almost. And some people dropped drop, out. Yeah, yeah, some like 20 something people. And were all 20 something of you posted um, at the, the state house? In the state house, yeah. So everyone who finished at the course was posted at posted, the state house? Uh, yeah, at the state house, yeah. Okay. And would this have still been in 2002 or yeah. 2003? 2002. 2002. Yeah, uh, yeah, 2002, I think so. You told us the name Scorpio 2. <laughs> um, do you know where the name come f um, came from or what it signifies um, for your group? Uh, I don't know, but I know of State House symbol is a, like a scorpion. The badge of State House is a scorpion. You know, that is our, our symbol, you know. So when you were transferred to State House um, in 2002, what, what was the name of your, um, your battalion or your company? Um, what exactly, which part of the army were you in at State yeah, House? I was, uh, they put us on the Delta Company. Just so we understand the setup at State House, um, can you explain are these members of the state guards? Is that correct? Yeah. And at the state house, how many companies did you have from um, from the state guards? Were all of you based at state house, or were some of you based elsewhere? Yeah. When we transferred for newly, we are all based in the uh, state house in the Delta Company. Was there another group of soldiers at State House apart from the Delta Company? Yeah, you have uh, the, the Bravo Company. That is the plain cloth, you know. And you have the Support Weapon Company. Did the uh, support weapon company have a particular name that it was known by? No, they only call them support weapon. So these were the three groups of and state admin, admin, you know, and admin, admin. So you were placed in the Delta Company. Yeah. Tell us what your role was um, as a member of the Delta Company. Uh, we normally perform duties there in the QRF. And QRF, Quick Reaction Force, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, tell us um, what your duties were as a member of the QRF. QRF um, is like when, you know, the president is going out like convoy. Sometimes, you know, they select some of us to man, you know, the convoy, you know, vehicles like the support to go on advance, like he is supposed to, you know, attend a meeting around. So we come in advance and hold the ground. You know. And apart from that, what else um, were members of the QRF um, responsible for? Yeah, the guard in the state house, like you have the towers, you know, sangas and the bunkers. Yeah. And that's for the QRF. What QRF, about yeah, yeah. QRF, you know, you know, do you know they used to dispatch, you know, guards from there. They do those guards. 
So you told us um, Q, um, QRF was um, manned by the Delta Company. Yeah. Was it time. all members of the Delta Company who had QRF oh. duties? And you or have some the, the I sorry, I forget one. You have one company, Physical Guard. They call them Physical Guard also, you know. Sometimes we, we work together, you know. Delta Company and the Physical Guard sometimes, you know, mingle together. And what was the difference between the Delta Company and the Physical Guards? Delta Company is the only the commandos, and the Physical Guards are the most of the infantry soldiers, you know. Did the Physical Guards um, have a different role in terms of, let's say, protection um, duties that was different from the Delta Company? All the doing duty sometimes, Denton Bridge, you know, mile two, you know, they normally go there mile two, Denton Bridge. You have Banjul, Battery Flat, Tower up over there, airport, you know. And you said the Bravo Company were the plain clothes? Plain clothes, yeah. Um, what, was, um, what was their role? Um, in term, or what were their functions um, within State House? Uh, they are like bodyguards. They are the bodyguards. But they used to secure inner core in the State House. And what would inner core entail? Uh, that is the State Building. The State Building have, you have the front gate and the back gate and the back. So the plain clothes are responsible to secure that place, you know. And where would the other guards secure? Uh, all the plain clothes are only uh, based only maybe in Kanelai also. Were there any at State House in Banjo? No, only that place I can remember. Okay. Um, and also you had the support weapons company? Support weapons company, yeah. What were they responsible for? Those are like sometimes like artillery is heavy weapons, you know, they are the ones responsible for that, you know. And then you had the administrative. Yeah, um, administrative, group. yeah. So essentially from what you've told us, this would be about a battalion or just um, a bit more than a battalion? It's a battalion. A battalion. A battalion, all combined, all groups. Okay. So for how long were you um, posted um, at State House as as a guard within the Delta Company? From 2002 up to 2004. And during that time, were you at any point promoted? Did yeah, your rank the, change? Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the, the, the commando train, I was uh, promoted to Lance Corporal because my promotion come from my parent battalion, is, that is was Fajara Barracks. I was on the attachment in the state house. My promotion, my, 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 my posting is not confirmed yet, you know, because they put me on the attachment. So my promotion come from Fajara Barracks as a Lance Corporal. That was 2000 and the 2002, the end of uh, 2002. So between 2002 and 2004, you were a member of the Delta Company. Delta Company, yeah. Um, in the State Guard. Yeah. Were you based at State House in Banjul only, or did you go to another um, location? Yeah, we are in uh, Banjul up to a time they said there is a transfer for Delta, all the Delta, Delta Company to go to Kanelai. <coughs> that was around, I think, early 2003. They they transfer all of us to to Kanelai, all the Delta, Delta Company. And when the Delta Company moved to Kanelai, um, can you tell us um, under whose command you were at Kanelai? At that time, uh, Major Khalifa Bajinka was there. He, he, he's late, he's, uh, he passed away. And who was Major Khalifa Bajinka's deputy at the time? Uh, you have uh, uh, Major Kausu Sanyang, 
is there on yeah I forgot one officer what maybe later I'll recover I recall his name um, we'll have quite a few names to come back to yeah, um, yeah. as time goes on. Mm -hmm. When you arrived at Kanilai, were you given any briefing as to um, what was expected of you? Yeah, they told us that, you know, um, there's a lot of trade going around Kanilai area, you know. So Delta Company is supposed to, you know, go there immediately. That, that, post, that, that transfer is like, it's an urgent, the way they brief us. They say Delta Company prepare. Some of us don't even take our, you know, bags. They say it's urgent. You have to go to Kanilai. There is a threat over there around the borders. You know, the rebels are trying, you know, and the Senegalese forces. So they say the mission Delta Company should move to Kanilai immediately. So when we arrive there, then, you know, we report there to our commander. Then we take over the the guard forces, like the borders, the guard forces around the border. You know, Kanela is, a, is so close to Senegal, you know, border area. The Casamas region? Yeah, we take over all those guard forces around that area and we conduct in patrols, you know, frequent patrols around the borders every time. And what were you briefed in terms of um, what you should look for as you were patrolling the borders, um, the Gambian Senegalese border? How it was that, you know, rebels entering the country and the Senegal forces also, you know, operating in the Gambian territory borders, you know. So that's what they tell us. So we have to make sure that the, the patrols, they will brief us like, you know, any unusual you know we have to the commanders have to you know take the situation a report send a report you know so what would a normal day be for um be for you at Kanilai as part of your um border patrol duties that's no was no. it every day or it's every day some will be you know position like in the guard poses you know some going patrol, some coming. Yeah. And how would your um, patrols be conducted? Were you walking? Were you using vehicles? Vehicles. We use vehicles. And um, would you go in groups? Yeah, we go in a section. From so about eight or nine eight, men? Yeah. Okay. And uh, you would be patrolling the the border up and down? Border, yeah. We sometimes we start from Kanilai, we come up to uh, Bagwe, up to Dasilame, you know. And apart, apart from these patrol duties, um, were you tasked to do anything else? Yes. During the uh, patrol, we go up, I think we, this patrol go up to a time, maybe I can say, up to around maybe two, three, four months, you know. So, because that time you put on uniform when we're going on those patrol. So, the, the order change, we don't have to put on uniform. You have to dress on casual dress anyhow. Plain clothes. Yeah, like any dress. And uh, was there, well, let me phrase that differently. What kind of weapons um, did you have at that time? That time, you know, my uh, our pa personal weapons like uh, is AK-47 and pistol. No, 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 I'm wrong. Sorry, only AK-47. For how long did you serve um, at Kanilai? You said from the beginning of 2003. Yeah. Um, how long did you stay at Kanilai? Yeah, I was there up to from 2003 up to 2004. Can I remember up to 2004. 
during that time that you were um, based at Kanilai, 2003 to 2004, um, were you involved in any kind of operation? Yeah, I'm involved in one operation that time. That was 2003. Do you remember when in 2003? I cannot remember the month. Um, was it um, in the first half of the year? Was it in the second half of the year? Maybe, maybe second. Maybe it can be second. Or I cannot remember actually the month, you know. But I know it's in, in 2003 itself. Um, can you tell us what happened, what that operation was about? Uh, we, you know, as normal, we put on, you know, normal dress, normal, you know, normal dress. So we start patrol from Kanilai. We come up to, that was, you know, I think we depart there around, around maybe... One o'clock, uh, twelve or one. So we came up to around the same the border area. We go up to Dasilame. We go up to up to up to we come to Serekunda, you know. And when you say we, who was um, who was with you at the time? At that time, uh, General Baji was driving. Then he was, I don't know where, a captain or what, I cannot remember his rank. Um, f what's the first name of General Baji? Suleiman Baji, Sol Baji. Yeah. Please continue. Who else was part uh, of your team? Then you have Major Borakoli. Borakoli is in. You have, at uh, that time, Manjang was a staff sergeant. S staff sergeant Sana Manjang. Uh, you have uh, Sirifu Jise. That time I don't know his rank. I don't know where the You have Michael Correa and myself, I uh, Yusuf Asani. So it's a team of six people? Yeah. Can you tell us what happened? Yeah, when we patrol, we came up to around night, you know. I think two to three o'clock at night, you know. General uh, Sol Baji is the driver. He took us up to a place around Kanifing. I don't know actually, you know, that place, you know. So he said, um, this is a mission come from the S president. He yeah, made that, you know, um, independent newspaper supposed to be born should be born so but let me put this clear before when the the the, the patrol order was changed like you know to, we don't put on uniforms we put on the casual dress so at that time you know the commander over there uh, the late Bajinka you know brief us tell us that you know um, you got to be very careful there is abnormality. Anytime you go outside, be careful. Let somebody don't tell you to do something, you know, which is not, you know, in line with the job. You know, he Bajinka brief us, give us that briefing. And one officer, that time, you know, he was there. He's also a uh, major Sadio Jaju. He's also part of, you know, you know, when we transfer to uh, Kanelai, Delta Company. So Major Sajo Jaju also is another commander who al also brief us and tell us that, you know, let us be very careful. We are going on patrol, things change. You know, you see now, you know, you are not putting on a uniform. So be very careful whatever you do there. If you do something wrong there, one day you will be quick son. So be very careful. So... At that point, what did you understand by um, those briefings? I don't understand those briefings, but like I much what uh, somebody, you know, tell you about that, be careful. Now on your patrol, you don't put a uniform, you go, be careful. Maybe they know something which we don't know, you know, but they give like an advice, be careful. You do something, you know that you are doing something wrong, one day you will be quick, son, you know. So I have 
for me, you know, I take that advice from the, uh, the commander at that time and Sergeant Jaju also, you know, once brief people, you know. So until, you know, some people, you know, report him to the, he have a problem through that, you know, he don't enjoy staying there. You know, I think he have a problem with the, the former president that, you know, he's the one, he learned that, you know, he's the one who is discouraging the soldiers, you know, what, whatever he do, you know, he will, he will see. And so when late, um, well, he's late now, uh, Major Bajinka told you mm -hmm. that be careful that someone does not make you do something. Mm -hmm. um, do you know who he was talking about? Or no, I don't know at that time, you know, yeah. He was just giving an advice because at that time, like every soldier there is very careful what you will say, you know. You know, if they know, if they can give you advice, but it's not going to be like directly, but it's going to be like, you know, indirectly. So, at that time, who were, um, who could have given you orders? So, we know Major Bajenka was the mm -hmm. commander. Yeah. Um, who else could have given you orders apart from um, Major Bajenka at that time? Oh, like sometimes the, the, the normally brief parade, like in the morning parade, like uh, Susanya will be there. When the son Sadio Jajo will be there, like if they have morning parade, you know, like soldiers falling in the morning who are in the ground to know who is sick or who is not, who is not, you know, around, you know. You told us that the entire Delta Company had been moved to Kanilai. Yeah, yeah. Who was the leader of your platoon? Is, is. I know, I don't know the, the leader of the problem, but I know this guy, uh, the commander was there, this guy, you know, Major Khalifa Bajinka, he's the commander. What I'm trying to establish are the other people who were in charge, apart from Major um, Khalifa Bajinka. So other people who could have given you orders. So You've Baji, like, you know, General Sol Baji? Um, did he have a position at that time? At that time, yeah, I think he's an officer at that time. Because we go with him on, at that time on patrol, you know. He's the one we go with. Apart from him, who else was in a position of command, essentially? At that, uh, Bora is also, you know, I can remember, you know, he's also, you know, he's part of them. Would that be Bora Koli that yeah. you've mentioned before? Yeah, yeah. When you, had, when you received this briefing from Major um, Khalifa Bajinka, were these people present? They are all present. All it's of like, them were like present? It's like a falling, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, apart from that briefing that you received, were you told anything else um, that was significant about your change from uniform to plain clothes and um, what the situation was at the time? No, only Sajo Jaju who advised us, you know, you know, apart from Bajinka, it's only Sajo Jaju, you know. And was it at the same briefing or was it a different it's, briefing? It's a different briefing, yeah. Um, different when briefing. did that briefing take place? The yeah. one by um, Sajo Jaju? Oh, I cannot remember what is. The same 2003, that time, you know. That was before we go to that uh, operation we are talking of like independent newspaper, you know. So that was basically the starting point where you were briefed to be careful? Yeah, that was the time, yeah. And then you were told about yeah. an operation yeah, by Yeah, yeah, when Bajin. we go that day, we go. Um, I don't even know that area. I don't even, you know, know the area we go. We stand behind, there is a fence, and we park the vehicle. But I know maybe... Uh, the driver will know, General Baji, you know the area. So when we stop in the car... Just just a second. Um, what's the name of um, General Baji's driver, the driver at the time? No, no, he's the one driving. Do you know his name? No, no. General Sol Baji is the, the one driving. He's the one driving. Driving on that day, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you said the area. 
generally. Can you give us an idea of where that area is located? Ka it's Carnifing, around Carnifing, yeah. Continue telling us what happened when you arrived. You said it was around 2 or 3 in the morning. Yeah, yeah, 2 or 3, yeah, something like that, you know. I remember the time, actually. It was, it was late night. Please tell us what happened. Yeah, um, he told us that, you know, we are all in the car. It's a pickup. Understand, we all come there. So he said, you know, this order come from the from Yajame that the independent newspaper should be born. So at that time he have uh, um, a, a gallon, but for me that time I don't know that, it's, that there is a, a fuel over there. So he take the fuel, then he brief, he said that you know the place supposed to burn, but I never come to that place, and I remember the brief in my Commander told me and Sajo Jajo told me, understand? So I told them that you know, I have, uh, uh, when about to go, I tell you know, General Baji that you know, I have a knee problem and I cannot run, understand? So I was staying in the car. Well, before that, you told us that General Baji said the order mm -hmm. to burn the independent newspaper came from the president, president. Yaya Jami. Yeah, yeah. Did General Baji have a telephone at that point, at that time? He had a telephone, yeah. Did he speak to anyone um, while you were present? Uh, he speak to somebody, but I heard he was saying, yes, sir, your excellency. He was mentioning this for a yes, sir, your excellency. And was that before or after he told you about the mission? After he told the mission, then after. That's the time after, after he told the mission, these people left. So he was talking in the phone with somebody. He said, yes, I, your excellency. So when these people left. Who did you think he was speaking to when he said, yes, sir, your excellency? I think that time, I do not know what, you know, the only person that time who have that title, you know, we all know is the president who have that title. If they are talking as soldiers, you know, if talking to somebody, they use yes, I, your excellency, they use it for, for, for the president. What I think. And so you believe he was talking to the president at the time? Yeah, that's um, what, that, that name, yes, I, your excellency, the soldiers use it for only him. And the president, of course, would be, what's the name? Yeah, Jeme, the former president. And so when he, first he told you that the order to burn the independent newspaper came from Yaya Jame. Yeah. Then he um, provided, you said, a gallon? Yeah. To the other members of your team? Team, yeah. Um, you've already given us the names, but I'll just repeat. Yeah. Um, to make sure that it's clear. Mm -hmm. You told us General Saul Baji was the one driving. Yeah. And so when he gave the gallon um, to the others, it would have been Bora Koli. Mm -hmm. Sana Manjang, mm -hmm. Sheriff Gise, mm -hmm. Michael Correa, yeah. and um, you were there, but yeah. you said you did not leave the yeah, car. Yeah, I did not leave, yeah. I say I have a knee problem. At that time, it's true, I have a knee problem. I cannot, you know, I have the feeling that, you know, this, this is running. I cannot run, but I also remember the advice. That's why I make this trick to say that, you know, my knee is paining me. What was in the gallon? I don't confirm, you know, what is inside what I see the gallon was. It's like, uh, maybe it's, uh, it's going to be like a fuel, you know. Did he give it. them anything else apart from the gallon? No, no, no. Did he tell them anything else apart from their, um, the president ordered us to burn down the independent newspaper? No, he don't tell anything. He don't tell them anything at that moment. They just, yeah, it's like they know the place. That somebody know the place, you know. Actually, they just get down because we stand around the fence area behind the, the, the area. is like there's a fence, in the short fence, but behind, of, behind we are, that's where we park our car. So these people just go and enter there. There's like a, a, a big gate, you know, where the park is, you know, car is parking, then they enter, they go. 
And while they were gone, you said that he spoke to someone and he said, yes, Excellency, you yeah. believe it was the President yeah. Yaya Jami at yeah. the time. Apart from, yes, um, yes, sir, Your Excellency, did he say anything else? Yeah, he told me, you are an idiot, you know. That's what he told me. He told me, you are an idiot. No, just to clarify, when he was on the phone speaking to Yaya Jami at the time, did you hear him say anything else apart from, yes, sir, Your Excellency? No, no, no. Only he used this name, this phrase. Then after, you know, because he's talking with someone, when after, you know, I opened the door. But he don't even talk long. He only talk shortly. Yes, sir, Your Excellency. Just like somebody but was talking to him, he was saying, yes, sir, yes, sir. So and he then, was listening? Yeah. Um, and after he hung up the phone, did he tell you anything about that conversation? No, no, he don't tell me. He only tell me you are an idiot. Why did he say that? I don't know. Maybe why I don't go or what, you know, he does the only what he gives me. You are an idiot. After um, the group left and went to the independent um, newspaper, the building with a gallon that you believe um, contained fuel, mm -hmm. what happened next? So when they go, it's like two minutes, it's like very short, like two or two and a half minutes. You know, they just go. One time, you know, you know, they just, we heard of noise where I am, you know, we, because it's just behind. We heard of the noise. Just two minutes, you know, we, I ha they, they start running. They come in running, but one of the guys, you know, sat was born in fire. Which, um, which of the guys? Uh, Sana Manja. So when we get out of the, me and him with General Baji, we get out of the car, we saw when they come, somebody coming, but he sat it's with fire. So they run. This guy coming, you know, we, he just coming towards the car. So the other people also, because they are so panicked, they run, they pass us. So when this guy come in, his heart was burning, we take the sun, me and General Baji, we help him to use the sun to, to help him to off his heart. His, all his body is born, up to his tight stomach, all the neck, that was Sanamanja. So we help him to up the fire and we put in the car, you know, these people, they even pass us, the, the other group, you know, the people he went up, so we go in front, they get in the car. Apart from Sanamanjang, was anyone else um, was anyone else burned? No, no, it's only him. You told us that before you saw Sanamanjang running, you heard a noise. Yeah. Can you describe the noise that you heard? It's like you know people shouting, you know, like somebody shouting, you know, people. It's a lot of noise shouting, you know, and. Yeah, it's the, it's the noise of people shouting, you know. That's the noise I heard, you know. Like screaming. Screaming, yeah. Could you see the, the building of the independent newspaper at that point? Yeah, where we stand, you know, the car was parking, you know. So it's like, it's going to be like maybe 40, 40 meters, 40 meters, you know. 40 or 30, something like that, 40 or 30. So when um, Sana Manjang and others returned from the building, what could you observe when you looked at the building? I see flame. Before we go, we look back, you know, we see a so flame like, you know, fire. So, but we don't even waste time, you know. When this guy get in the car, he was so shouting, you know, because he's born. He was saying, you know, in Mandinka word, like, Nahaju Beti you know. What because does that mean? It's like, you know, all my, you know, I'm destroyed, all my affairs is destroyed. He was like, you know, angry, you know. What he's feeling pain, his body is all born, you know. Did um, Saul Baji say anything to him at that point? No, he don't say anything because so I feel like he's panic. So we just struggled to go back to Kanelai. Um, before that, for this operation, you told us that it followed from a patrol. Yeah, patrol, yeah. And you told us that during the patrol, you would normally have your weapons, mm -hmm. your personal weapons. Yeah. 
um, you told us that you would have AK-47. Yeah. On this particular night, um, were those the same weapons you had, or did you also have other types of weapons? We have, we have AK-47, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, I mistakenly told you before, uh, with pistol, you know, we don't have pistol at the but I believe before that time we have pistol. When we are going on that, those patrols, we have our personal pistols. I can't remember. And when did they start issuing you with pistols? How, um, how long before this first operation that you've just told us about, the independent newspaper? I think it's going to be like maybe six months, six months. Six so months. at that point you would have had AK-47s as well as your pistols or only your pistols? Only AK-47 and pistol all. And each of you would have had that? Yeah. When um, Sana Manjang and the rest of the group um, joined you in the vehicle, um, was anyone's weapon missing, as far as you recall? Uh, at that time, I, uh, at that time, you know, I cannot, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Only later, later when, when, you know, after, after the mission, I, don't, I think almost uh, maybe one month when they start investigating, you know, I had that, you know, Sana Manjang, you know, lost his pistol, you know. But at that moment, at that time, I don't even know, you know, that, you know, he lost his pistol. You said later on when who was investigating? Uh, that was like, a, 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 like an investigation about it, you know. I think but you don't recall who conducted the I investigation? I don't know who conducted the investigation, but the government, you know, do an investigation, you know, launch an investigation about it, and... I don't know whether they, they deny it, you know. They deny everything that they deny it, you know. Not time. They denied any responsibility yeah, for any, the yeah, burning of the independent yeah. newspaper yeah. building. Yeah. This is in spite of the fact that you have told us that yeah. Saul Baji told you that the order came from Yaya Jam. Yeah. yeah. And in spite of the fact that while the operation was unfolding, Saul Baji spoke to Yaya Jam at that time. Yeah. You told us that when everyone went inside the building, the reason you gave for not leaving the vehicle was yeah. that you were injured, your knee was yeah, injured. Yeah. And so you couldn't leave the vehicle. Vehicle, yeah. You've also told us that at the time, Saul Baji was in a command position. Position, yeah. So in terms of the chain of command, he was your superior. Yeah, he's my superior, yeah. And so when he told you about the mission and to go down and burn the independent newspaper, that was an order, wasn't it? Yeah. And you did not follow that order? Yeah. And you gave an explanation which was simply that you had a knee problem? Yeah. What was his reaction to you disobeying that order? He don't say he only used this word, you know, you are an idiot. I think that's why he used that word, you know, that phrase on me. You know, so... Was that the first time that he heard that you had a knee injury? That is the... No, I, I even have a... I know, you know I cannot run, but I have an, a knee injury. Even that time I have a knee injury, I cannot run, you know. I know that I cannot run. And after the advice, you know, my, I recall from the commander and Sergeant Jaju, you know, that helped that also I use it, you know, to... To, to protect myself, you know, I say, let me not, you know, because anything I do, I remember those advice, you know. What I'm trying to understand is why General Baji, well, um, captain or whatever his rank was at the time, mm -hmm. why he did not um, do anything else as a result of the excuse that you gave him. Did anything happen to you as a result of not following that order? Yeah, something happened when, when we... When we, uh, after that, you know... You can um, drink some water. That's yeah, yeah, your yeah. bottle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they so brought it in from the witness room, so yeah, it's not yeah. um, anyone else's. Yeah. Something happened after that patrol, you know, because when this guy, we brought this guy until he, you know, after the treatment, we bring him up to Kanelai, then I believe from the, hosp from the clinic over there, somebody attend him one of the medical, I don't know, because when we reached, it's like everybody was, was so stressed, you know. So from there we reached at the clinic, the old lady, Solbaji was there, 
the rest of everybody scattered going back to where you know where you live you know when you say to treat this guy you're referring to sana manja yeah, who sana was the manja, one who was yeah, injured yeah but just before that while you were all in the vehicle returning to kanilai mm -hmm. um did anyone say anything about that operation no no only the word you know uh sana manja say na hajo betinyata understand so and some of you know it's like not but nobody's talking about it. everybody was stressed it's like you know look at you know this guy he's you know how you know he dis all his body is you know so far he doesn't want it maybe everybody's thinking about that you know at that time did Saul Baji make a phone call um, during that journey no 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 he don't make no I what I can recall it because he don't make phone call because I was inside the car Mm -hmm. some and uh, with somebody then the other people are behind the car so just to be clear Saul Baji was the one driving yeah who would have been next to Saul Baji Bora was sitting there Bora Koli and at the back you were um, sitting, sitting Manja was in the middle we mm -hmm. put him on the middle mm -hmm. I was sitting the other side mm -hmm. uh, I think Michael Korea was sitting the other side so the only person who would have been at the back is Sheriff Gisse Gisse yeah yeah so when you returned, did anything happen to you as a result of the fact that you did not follow General Baji's order? Yeah, they don't. They took me out of the patrol. I don't go on patrol. So I always do in guard. I think they take me out. For, after that mission, you know, from that time, you know, they, they don't normally call me when they're going for patrol. So I was posed as a guard. The same Delta company, but only a guard. So only a few of you would go on patrols? No, different people used to go. You have different, different groups, you know. But when you came back, as you believe that as a result of that um, operation that you did not participate, um, participate in, yeah. well, in terms of going into the building, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you were removed from your duties well, as a team. patrol. Yeah. Were you told why? No, they don't tell me anything. Do only you... It's normally they normally call whenever they, there is a patrol they will call me and tell you are going today you are in the patrol so since that time sometimes i see them they will go but they don't call me so i feel even happy about that because what i saw this guy body is all born so and i remember those advice you know i feel comfortable at that time you know only like doing guard you know did you at any point go on patrol duties after that? No, 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 I don't go. When you returned, did you report what happened to anyone, such as Major um, Khalifa Bajinka? No, no, I don't report nothing to nobody. And why not? <laughs> because I, I have the fear. I don't know. This is a mission. It's done, and I fear to take to that time. You know, you cannot talk to, you don't trust nobody, the soldier. We don't trust each other, you know, at that time. If I go and say something, I have the fear that if I say, talk to somebody, you know, that person can turn against me, you know. And why was it um, the situation at the time that there was fear amongst the soldiers and you couldn't talk to anyone? What was the reason for that? Uh, I, it's like I, I believe that you know the way you know we all know you know how the army is you know some people you know like telling lies you know some people are very happy on telling lies to lie against somebody so that you know he can be compensated or you know at that time you know that's what is happening when you say compensated, what, what are you referring to? Com compensated how? Like ranks. Ranks? Ranks, yeah. So if soldiers told on each other, then they would be rewarded, rewarded with a know? promotion. Yeah, promotion, that's what you know, some people think. Not everybody, but some. You know, that's why you know, we live in that fear. Whatever you know, you keep quiet. You don't talk to nobody, you know. Do you know of any examples where that happened? Uh, not at, at this time, you know. You know, I cannot recall, you know, that, you know, but 
if we since two, two, uh, since 94 up to up to 2000 and the time we had MLF, there is a lot of history, you know, which happened to some people, you know, who don't do nothing but they lie against them, you know. <laughs> And perhaps we'll come to some of those examples yeah, later, if you can't yeah. recall any right now. Um, you said after that you were not given any patrol duties. No. Um, but you stayed at Kanilai yeah, from 2003 Kanilai. to 2004. Four, yeah. When in 2004 um, were you transferred to somewhere else? Yes, I was selected uh, to go to, um, to transfer to Bravo Company, bodyguard, you know, training course. And that would be back to State House, is that back correct? Back to State House, yeah. Um, during the time that you were still at Kanilai, um, did you participate um, in any other operation apart from the one you've told us about concerning the independent newspaper? Yes, let me, I'll, come, I'm, I'll come to that, you know, that part. I meant while you were at Kanilai between yeah. 2003 and 2004. No, not that time. Okay. Not that time. And were you aware of any other operations that were conducted by members of the patrol team? No. I don't, I don't know where. So you told us that shortly after that you were transferred um, to the Bravo Company, um, based at State House. Yes, at State House, but for plain clothes, uh, we start training. Do you recall when in 2004 that was? Was it at the beginning of the year, or middle of the year, or yeah, end of the year? At the end of, I think, end, end of the year, yeah. I think around end of the year. End of 2004? Yeah, end of, end of 2004, I think so, yeah. So tell us what happened um, when you joined the... Bravo Company at State House. Yeah, I, we go. We start, you know, uh, like plain cloth drills. All that, you know, we do it during the commando training. We do that, you know, uh, we do that training. But we start it again. They start, you know, you know, we do that exercise also. Divorce and embossed training. You know. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, it's like divorce and emboss. What it's does that mean? Like divorcing from a moving vehicle and like when the vehicle is running, it has a speed of 40 km per hour, you know, how you should divorce and how you should protect the president, you know. It's like... And you call it divorce? Yeah, divorce and emboss, yeah. And Exercise, emboss. yeah. Yes, please continue telling us what else your training entailed. Yeah, after that, you know, I, when we finish that training, you know, then they transfer me to plain cloth. I work there. I think I have six months in the plain cloth. During that six months, you know, I think the end of, the end of, uh, I think 2004, the end of 2004, then, then they select me as an orderly also in that in that 2004, when he finished the training as a bodyguard, I worked in the plane court for almost six months. Then they select me as an orderly, like four of us, like me, Seku Jallo, Seni Jamme, David Njai. So when they select us... Um, just to make sure this is clear, when you were transferred back to State House, mm -hmm. you said that was in 2004. 2004, I yeah. I believe initially you said end of 2004. Yeah, yeah, I, I, that place, I'm wrong. Okay. Sorry to correct that, you know. Yeah. It was around, you know, I think the, maybe the starting, uh, the, in the middle, you know, but I worked in the plain cloth for almost six months. Then later, you know, they select me as an orderly, and I went back to Kanelai again. After that. And you were an orderly for who? President Yajame. Yeah, told us it was the four of you yeah. that were selected. Yeah. So you, Seku Jame, Seni Jame, and David. David Njai, yeah. David Njai. Yeah. As an orderly for um, Yaya Jame, where were you based? Was it still at State House? 
yeah. initially? Now, when we finish, uh, when the select course has an orderly, then they post us to Kanelai back in his residence. Can you tell us, as far as you know, why were the four of you um, selected as orderlies for Yaya Jame? Uh, that one I don't know. That one come from the, like my, the commander called us. I remember, I cannot remember who is at the state house at that time. I think that time this uh, Bajinka went back to Banjul. You know, at that time he was not in Kanila, he went back to Banjul. Then they told us, uh, uh, one of my commander in the, at Kanila at that time, tell you, you are going to report to Banjul, you know. Sorry, I'm wrong. That was, I was in the Bravo convoy company. Then I remember the clerk. The clerk told me that, you know, um, you are selected as an orderly. We have to go and report to the commander office. That was Bajinka. That time he was also in the in the uh, in the state house. So Bajink at that time was the commander of the state state house at that time, Ijin, yeah. At, um, at state house. Yeah. Um, can you tell us what happened when you reported to yeah. Bajinka? Yeah, we report there are four, all, four, four, four of yeah four of us, you know, Seku, Seni, me and David. So he advised us, tell us that you know you are selected as orderlies, so you gotta be very careful. You know, when you go there, you know, only do your duty, you know, be careful. Whatever he told you, whatever president told you, do this job. You know, it's mostly he started to show us that, you know, like an orderly job, you got to take care of something like clothes, you got to do this, you got to clean the house, you know, you have to you know, listening to him when he talked to you carefully, understand, before. If you don't understand anything, don't hesitate, you know, ask him again. Sometimes, you know, you know, he have a system of, you know, talking to you in a slow form, you know. So if you don't understand what he say, <laughs> don't be scared, you know. Tell him, sir, sorry, sir, I beg your pardon. Just trying to, you know, advise us, you know, what type of a person he is, you know. You know, sometimes he can be changed, you know, if you, if he, if you ask him, sir, sorry, he can tell you this word, you know, fuck you, fucking idiot, are you blind, are you, are you, are you deaf, understand? So, so, he, he's just trying to make, prepare us mentally, you know, when we are going, what we will face, you know, because he know him more than us, you know. So this is the advice that yeah. um, Major yeah. Khalifa Bajinka was G giving G you. Knows, yeah. How did he describe Yaya Jame oh. to you? Yeah, he say, you know, you know, he, only, he advised, he say, you know, demand is not, it's difficult, you know. So don't be scared, take your time. You know, what I will advise you, listen to him carefully, whatever he tell you, if you don't understand, I think that is the most interesting part of where he explained. He said, if you don't understand what he say, don't be afraid of what will come to him later. Understand? Just stand and say, sorry, sir, I beg your pardon. He will use all these words. You know? Are you fucking deaf? You don't hear what I say? And maybe he can even give you an eye deaf, you know? You know, if you look at you, so that's why, that's the Maybe advice. Maybe he can give you an, a what? You know, if you look at you, an ear deaf, you know, or maybe a blind eye, you know, like, you know, you know, you are not even talking to him. So that's what, you know, he's trying to, you know, to prepare us mentally and physically. And, and when you heard all of that, how did you feel at that point? At that time, you know, I don't feel, you know, I don't feel comfortable. Because I always heard, you know, stories of orderlies, how they last there, you know, what happened to them. 
And I'm still talking about the time before you started working as an orderly. Yeah. What kind of stories did you hear about orderlies and um, what would happen to them? Yeah, orderlies always going to jail, you know. I always heard of that. That's what I had always thinking, you know. Somebody walk at him at the end of, before he fire you, you always end up going to jail or detention. And every time, you know, detention in Fajara Barracks, you know. Uh, that's what I... I had, so it's not easy. And uh, did you, uh, do you recall any specific examples of what you heard before you started working for Yaya Jame as an orderly? Yeah, when I start working, I, that's the time I see, you know. But before you started working for him, what you heard were rumors of people rumors, going, yeah, yeah. going um, mm -hmm. being dismissed and detained at Fajara Barracks yeah, and places like yeah. that. I already had, you know, one orderly also, uh, Buba Jame, one of the orderly, I think that was around when we are moved 2002. I remember this orderly, you know, he was this, you know, orderly. Later he was dismissed and taken to guard. Then after, you know, I think he feel not safe. Then he absconded and leave the country. You know, uh, on one Oddly, Walinjai, also the same, you know, the way he end, you know, it's not good, you know, so. You mentioned Buba Jame, did he have a nickname? No, I don't think so. I think this Oddly is, don't have a nickname. And you mentioned the Walinjai. Walinjai, yeah. Um, what were the ranks of these Oddlies, do you recall? Uh, that time I don't I don't know, but maybe landscape or maybe I don't actually know. Maybe landscape, I think so. Um, and you heard that they were dismissed. Do you recall hearing any um, reason as to why they were dismissed? I only I only heard this. He, you know, like they say, he will always say, "Oh, they steal my money." You know. They are thieves, you know. That's what he normally alike to them, you know. These are stories you heard before you before, started before, yeah. working there. Yeah. And he would um, accuse them of um, stealing his money. Money, yeah. You told us that with Walinjai, it didn't end well. Yeah. What do you mean by that? He also, I think, I don't know, he was, I don't know whether detained. And after he left, for him also, you know, he left the army. I think he's working for GRA now, you know. He left the army. So you told us that the four of you um, were briefed by Major Bajinka. Yeah. Um, who essentially told you that Yaya Jame was a difficult man? No, the commander, he was, he's the one, you know. Yeah. He's the one who's he's trying to, you know, prepare us mentally, you know. And that was Major Bajinka, Bajinka is that yeah, right? yeah. After the briefing, um, what happened next? Where did you go? Yeah, he told us that you are going to Kanilai. He begs at the building over there in Kanilai, his residence. So as soon as you were um, given the position of orderlies to Jama, you went straight to Kanilai? Straight to Kanilai, yeah. Were you the only four who were the orderlies at Kanilai for uh, Yaya Jame? Yeah. And that, when we arrived there, we met... Uh, this guy, Sajo Baji, you have A. W. Sanyang. Yeah. A. W. Sanyang, or yeah. mm -hmm. um, do you know what that stands for? Abdu Abdu We Sanyang. What you don't want to call him A. W. Sanyang. Mm -hmm. Who else? And Bajere. Bajere or Bajere Mane. Bajere Mane. Bajere yeah. Mane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like these people, we met them there. They are at least before us. So what happened? Four of us are in Kanilai. So at any Sajo Baji is based there in Kanilai. But Bajere used to come there and help Sajo to train us. 
as only Bajere will come there and spend maybe two months and go back. Uh, Abdugwe also will come and stay there with us for two months and go back to Banjulejen. So they start training us, you know, what we should do, so all the house, what you should do, cleaning, how you should work with the cleaners. The cleaners are supposed to come today, you know, you will be supervising, going with them, help them. Sometimes you even do the cleaning, you know, that is the building. And we normally go to the four houses, you know, you know, I say, another start of in Canal Light in the resident, you call that place four houses. So we also go there and supervise the cleanings over there. And mud house, you know. Anytime all those workers and orderly supposed to be there to supervise them, you know, to look what is happening, you know, whether it is clean or not. You know, sometimes we join with them together, you know, you do the cleaning. And they saw all the stores. This is what we should do. The workers come. When the workers come, you go there, there is a book, you give them supplies, you know, of what they should, you know, take rice or other thing oils for cooking, you know. And we go to the container where the meat, you know, where they slaughter, you know, you know, cows, they put the meat. And to give the supply also we have a record book, you know. Anything, you know. The four of you, were you under Saja Baji or um, who did you report to? Sometimes we report to Saja Baji. Mm -hmm. Saja Baji is, you know, permanently based there at that time. But uh, Bajere used to come there one month. We Sanya also to come there one month and go back to Banjul. We are, we are Sanya, yeah, AW. Um, in terms of the four of you, how were your responsibilities um, assigned? Like all four of you were the orderlies. You've told us the type of work yeah. um, that you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, you in particular, what specifically did you do while you were there? What was your role or your function? Sometimes I'm um, going, sometimes it's diff every day, sometimes somebody will go to the with, uh, go with the cleaners to the four house. Sometimes some will go to the container where the meat is. Understand? Sometimes some, uh, at any time somebody have to be in the building to man the telephone. There's a switchboard over there. That one, any time somebody must be there because maybe the president normally call sometimes. So you have to make sure that at any time somebody must be around. Even all these five people go outside, you know, one supposed to be there in the building. When the president, um, what, Yaya Jame at the time, when he was at Kanilai, who would attend to him personally? Which one of the four of you would attend to him? Normally, he come with an orderly from Banjul. At any time he's coming, there's an orderly in Banjul. So, any time he's coming to Kanilai, you know, sometimes he come with one orderly from Banjul. That time, this guy was there, Tombong, Tombong Bojang. You know, Tombong Bojang is there. You have, uh, you know, sometimes this guy will be there, Bajere will be there, and if Bajere is not there, you know, A.W. Sanya will be there. Yeah. And um, lastly, before the break, um, how much interaction did you have with Yaya Jame at the time while you were based at Kanilai? At that time, you know, because we are there newly, you know, so the only problem we have there, you know, the problem is the telephone. Sometimes somebody who stayed there long, you know, who know him better have the fit to man the telephone because anything he want, he used to call the switchboard. If you receive the call, if you don't recognize his voice properly, sometimes he will just call you and say something and hang up. So now if you try to call him back to tell him that, you know, you don't understand him, what he say, 
sometimes is problem. So normally somebody who stay there long is the one who normally man this telephone. So for us, you know, when we wake up, everybody is trying to disappear from there. You know, in the morning, early morning, somebody will just go to the mud house, somebody will go to the four house, somebody will go to the reservoir. You know, we try to be at least, you know, as, you know, we try to be far away from him, you know. It's only night time, you know, when, you know, we are all, you know, you know, we'll be all in the house, all of us will be in the house. Like 10 o'clock when the, you know, the, all the job workers finish, you know. But four house is like an orderly supposed to be there at any time. Sometimes he will go outside the bush forest whenever he's going to the farming, you know. He will go with the orderly, he come from Banjul. That's the one who will go with him, you know. Um, so essentially you were running away from manning the switchboard. Yeah, the switchboard is the problem, you know. If you don't, normally most of the people from us have problem with the switchboard. Because if you don't recognize his voice, what he say, if you are newly, you can just say something like this. Uh, so, so if you try to call him back, you know, that is fire, you know. Um, thank you very much for that, Mr. Sane. We'll um, go into more detail after the break. No, um, and we'll probably start in Mandinka, um, as you requested to change languages during your testimony. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, it is time for the break. Um, I hand over to you, and then we can continue after the break. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a break. <laughs> 30 minute break. And we'll come back at 12 noon, please. Thank you.